Once the point cloud has been attached, to double click anywhere on the point cloud itself will enable us to look at its properties and variety of new features and functions that we see up here in the point cloud ribbons. So the first thing to do would be to get the bounding box and the clipping frame set up, which we see alluded to here. The quickest way that you can do that is to simply select the corners of the existing bounding boxes and stretch that in to exclude any extraneous points that we really don't want to see on the screen, which I'm doing right here. And notice that the context of the clipping plane is pointing inward here. If we were to toggle that by clicking on it, we would see that the inverse of the selection of the clipping plane would be shown to us here. So that's very easy to do. We'll now be looking at some controls that we can get up here to alter the density of the point cloud display, which we can use via real time sliders up here. And this will control how densely we'll be able to actually see the point cloud data once we zoom in on it. Also note the auto update functionality, which is by default on. This allows us to see the point cloud manipulated in real time as we zoom in on it. Now, obviously, if point clouds become large enough or if you have a processor that isn't really up to the task, you could turn that off so that zooming functionality wouldn't cause performance degradation.